So you have understood that we go through the agenda 2030 from some goals. And well, I think uh, the presentation for now, it can be very important because uh, teacher must be leader in some uh, action. And so Clara Vasconcelos from uh, University of Porto or Porto, depending on the language, <laughs> uh, is here with us to, to present this uh, quality education goal number four. And please, uh, Clara from Portugal, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I would like to say that I'm very grateful for your presence, not only to you that are on site, but also those that are online. And I would like to express my thanks to the organizing committee. I know some of them. I have worked with them in other projects for having inviting me to be a keynote speaker. So thank you, Gina, uh, and uh, John Luke, and Phil, and all the others. Um, I was asked to speak a little bit about quality of education, um, and I decided to entitle my presentation Equitable Education for All, and I will emphasize or highlight the role of teachers of leaders of change. My idea was to tell you something about the 17 uh, sustainable goals, but the first speaker already said something, so uh, just remember uh, it started in uh, September of 1915, and all members of the United Unit approved this agenda. Um, the goals are interconnected, and I think the goal four is the one that can really be connected with all the others. So let's just catch goal four and discuss a little bit that, uh, give some insights. I'm not going to teach you anything that you don't know. I'm just going to remind you some things that I think are important. Uh, and I'd like to start uh, with uh, Malala Yousafzai. I think you all remember her. She was the younger person to win a Nobel Prize, in this case, the Nobel Prize of Peace. And uh, after winning the Nobel Prize, uh, she started giving lo lots of lectures, conference, and interviews in TV. And uh, this quote um, was, she used to say that quote many times. I even have displayed this quote in the wall of my lab in the faculty to my students to read. And she used to say, one child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. And what is, uh, she really wants to express is that we can educate with little things. We don't need much if we have the real motivation to promote a quality education. And when she quotes this, uh, she always says that education is the solution. So um, when I was preparing this presentation, I thought education is the solution for what? So let's hear her in a very short uh, interview where she explains what is for her uh, the solution. So I think I can do that, Linus. Uh, like that? No, can you click, please? And this is, is, I think we have a common want and desire, but perhaps uh, are not accomplishing it in, in the manner that, that shows the people how we, how we feel. But in some ways, we don't know what else to do. What, 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 is, what is your thought on that? Um, I think that uh, the people of America, the United States, uh, they truly support uh, peace and they say that we must not fight against war through war. They believe that dialogue is the best way and we must try to find a solution for it. And in my opinion, the solution that would work to fight all these wars and all these problems that people are facing is only education. Because you can, you can stop war for a second, but you don't know it would start again or not. Mm -hmm. We have seen First World War, we have seen Second World War, and I think Third World War is coming. But I believe that we must stop it now. I don't want to see a Third World War in, in this world again. And the best way to fight against this war is education because 
as we can see that children are suffering from terrorism, they are suffering from child labor and child trafficking. They are also suffering from the culture, norms and tradition. These are, there is not only one issue that we are facing through, there are many others as well. So I think education is the best way. People would be thinking, just going to school, learning about chemistry and physics and maths, and that's it. Going to school is not only learning about different subjects, it, teaches you communication, it teaches you how to live a life, it teaches you about history, it teaches you about how science is working. And other than that, you learn about equality because students are provided the same benches, they sit equally, they, it shows us equality, it teaches students how to, how to live with others together, how to accept each other's language, how to accept each other's traditions and each other's religion. It also teaches us justice, it also teaches us respect, it, it, it teaches us how to live together. So that's why I support, the, I support the idea of sending children to school because it is the best way to fight terrorism. And I want people to support us in this cause. And through Malala Foundation, we want to work for education of girls in, de uh, in the developing countries, especially in Syria now. They are suffering, they are homeless now. We want to help children in Afghanistan because they have been suffering from terrorism for decades. We want to help the children of India as well because they are victims of child labor. So I think issues and problems are enormous, but solution is one and that is simple. That is education. So I think what she tries to say with her sentence is that education is the solution to be able to live together and to find peace in the world. So if you can move to the next slide. Oh, no, I and made a mistake. Is, can you yeah. move, Linus? Okay. So let's speak a little bit about the targets of goal four. The first speaker already said something about it. Uh, so the first three are related to promote education in primary, pre-primary school, primary school, secondary school, and... Um, also vocational, technical, and also in higher education. So I'm going to speak a little bit of those three. I don't have much information regarding the increase, the number of people with relevant skills, but of course, if someone has education, he has more chance to have a financial success by finding a better job. Um, and um, I'm going to speak a little bit about target 4.5, which is eliminate all discrimination in education. And this means inclusive education. Uh, target 4.6, um, we should have already universal numeracy and literacy uh, because in 21st So target 4.6 is related to universal literacy and numeracy, but we have to start thinking in digital competencies, digital literacy, as the first speaker uh, already said. Um, I'm going also to speak a little bit about target 4.7, education for sustainable development and global citizenship. And uh, I think the last targets, well, some people say tar uh, goal four has 10 targets and others say that it has seven targets and the last three are means of, uh, um, means of uh, increase the first seven. So the, the target 4.8 or sometimes referred as target A uh, is related to build and upgrade the inclusive and safe schools. We all know that we need to upgrade education facilities, namely in the developing countries. Um, the other one is related with the number of scholarships. Lots of us are here because we got scholarships and uh, this call refers to the need to increase scholarships in developing countries so that students can go to other countries, learn, another, another, learn an, another language and another culture. And I will focus a little bit more in goal on the target 4.C or target 4.10 which is the need to supply qualified teachers. Okay, we are going to think what is a qualified teacher because being a teacher, a qualified teacher is not only having the training and the certificate. We need much more. Uh, and I'm going to speak a little bit, maybe you agree with me or not, but let, 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 let's find it. Um, so I'm going to start with target 4.1. Let me see if I can use the mouse. Yes, okay, this is uh, for data from, I'm using data and lots of images that are not mine, but I also, put, I always put the reference. And this was the state before the agenda 2030. So as you can see, uh, the information that uh, they give is that in almost half of the countries, less than one in two youth complete secondary education. So here we can see in, in this, this blue 
points. It's the number of uh, children that attend primary school. In orange, you have the number of students that go to middle or how some countries say upper lower secondary school. And of course, the number of students that can go to um, second, upper secondary school are fewer. Okay, but uh, what um, the agenda 2030 wants is to increase the number of um, not only of the children that can go to primary school, because according to the human rights, primary schools should be mandatory and free to all. But uh, uh, the agenda wants to, in to increase the number of uh, students that can achieve uh, all secondary school and maybe beyond it, if possible. OK, in this graph, the data shows another important thing. You can see that you have here a column. OK, this also was the state before the initiation of the pandemic. It was its data from UNESCO in 2015. And you can see here columns. The purple represents out of school girls lower of lower secondary school age. And in blue, out of school boys of lower secondary age school. So what we can find here, almost constantly, the number of boys that attend school is higher than girls. We have uh, at uh, the end of this graph, uh, a rate is almost equal, but we are, see, are going to see other uh, graphs with other data that show uh, a, a, a usual difference between female and males. But we uh, still only have 64% of boys and girls uh, attending secondary school. Um, and here we have, uh, um, an, again, boys, the rate of boys attending secondary school. Um, here uh, in purple, we have a uh, uh, lower secondary net enrollment for girls. Again, the rate uh, is different. Females have much more, have uh, attend school lesser than boys. Uh, and we uh, still had 20% of uh, students not being able to complete uh, secondary school. Uh, this graph gives another kind of data, but at the end, they, they, they all say the same. Um, it was uh, made to, um, to secondary school net attendance rate by household wealth, quintile sex, and residence. And we can see again that the number of girls that attend school is lower than the boys. Um, in terms of residents, people that live in rural places also attend less than people that live in urban places because they generally are richer and they have more schools in urban than in rural places. And we have here, which is also not surprising for us, that the poorest attend less school than people, students that belong to the richest families. Okay, so we are in the 21st century and the reality is still this one. Let's go to another target. It's um, eliminate um, all discrimination in school. And eliminate discrimination means inclusive education. Uh, and alls means all. So this target, um, wants to um, eliminate gender disparities. I think the next speaker is going to speak about that, but also uh, wants to include people with disabilities, uh, indigenous people and the children in vulnerable situations. So this is really the inclusive education that we want to promote. And UNICEF has lots and lots of programs, very good. Uh, well, UNICEF always works well, and that are devoted to the inclusive education. Um, for example, they have a new strategy called Every Ch Child Learns that started in 2016, and it goes to till 2030. It is uh, uh, very devoted to help children with disabilities to be integrated at schools, um, but they also care with training teacher and administrators to help them to be integrated. And of course, they, they have to close that huge gap between policy and practice. Even we, when we work in higher education and we do some research projects and at the end we have some important resolutions and conclusions, it is, it is very difficult to reach policymakers and really difficult to make any chance even in the curriculum. 
So research uh, ends up not uh, having the, the value that we would like to, 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 to get. Okay, this strategy called Every Child Learns, um, what pretends to, oh, intends, sorry, intends to equitable access to learning opportunities, improve learning and skills for all, and improve learning and protection for children in emergencies and fragile contests. Okay, promoting education by helping them in those situations. Uh, I'm just giving an example of migrants, and this example is from government of uh, Rwanda. They are really trying to include their um, migrants in all the new countries that they have to, to move. Um, I'm also in, in a project about internationalization, and I know the difficulties that migrants have, because generally the majority of them are unable to speak the new language, so it's very difficult to communicate. They also have... Um, a knowledge background very different because the curriculum is different uh, in, in all, all countries. Um, and special, they have a different culture. And sometimes they are unable to integrate with others because they don't accept the new culture or the opposite. The new, the new country doesn't accept their culture. So uh, I have some colleagues that in Poland that are working with Ukraines that moved to, to Poland because of the war. And they, they say that they have lots of difficulties because, especially because of the culture. And let's go to target 4.7, um, which is um, education for sustainable develop development goals. The first speaker already said something, but something that is very different of what I'm going to say, fortunately. Um, so uh, I really stole those slides from a colleague. He's from the University of Alicante. He's, uh, Javier Martinos Falco, I think I'm saying his name correctly. Um, and uh, the, the, this diagram was made by him. And he, he, he says that in the current education system, university students can perfectly end the university studies, studies without having any contact with sustainable development goals. And this is true, at least in my country. Um, for example, uh, I, I managed to have a curriculum unit in the Master for Training Biology and Geology uh, Future Teacher, because in Portugal we teach both disciplines together. Um, and in my first lesson, uh, I asked them, people with more than 20 years, what is the Agenda 2030 for sustainable development? And the reality is they don't know. And those that say, I know something, they they know the image to know the colors something but in fact what is that what what can i do to improve the goals and it is surprising that during uh, one semester um during one semester they really learn about the goals and um, they build some educational resources related to they can they can choose the um, the science i have some geoscience educators and physics and chemistry and biologists so they can choose two science and they prepare education education resource to involve this science with the um, sustainable development goals i don't know if you know this infograph I think it uh, it follows around the world. Uh, I have that in um, English and also in Portuguese, my native language. And um, it was made by many associations uh, and they were concerned with geoscience for future. They say, if I can read, geoscientists will be crucial in meeting society in future's challenge. So th it was made for that. But I think it is also important for us because it shows lots of areas, uh, areas of geoscience and the enrollment of those areas in the different sustainable developed goals. Um, and here we have uh, teaching. And although I like this infographic, I was a little bit disappointed because they only, they only um, enroll for targets in teaching, in education, and come on, we can be involved in, in 17. It depends of us, of the content that we are teaching and our motivation and the students, but we can be involved in the 17. So if you know someone from those associations, please send an email saying that I think, and maybe you too, that education can do much better. Yeah, at the end I can answer to you, okay? Um, I think the author of this book is here. Someone told me he would be here. I don't know. 
but I don't also know if you know this book. Um, one of my PhD students is finished her thesis in geoethics and sustainable development goals. So to help her, I was trying to find some books and articles to help her because geoethics is a, a new area in geoscience. And connecting both geoethics and sustainable development goals, it was a new, um, a, a new task that she had no information before. So I found this book which I think it's very important. I don't know if you have them, if you have it. Uh, it's not very expensive. Um, and the, I think it's important because the author, the editors and all the authors um, mix uh, geoscience with each one of the goals. And we can see by reading the book how geoscience can be evolved in 17 goals and how important is geoscience. Of course, I would prefer not geoscience and the sustainable development goals. I would prefer geoscience education and the sustainable development goals. Maybe one of you will write it. So if you write, email me because I will also buy the book. Uh, and if I'm speaking about that, I also have to speak to you about another book. I don't know if you know what is geoethics. Um, geoethics is an emergent area, but there is an association. There are two associations. I only know the name of one. I'm so sorry for not knowing the name of the association in uh, in Czech Republic. I'm sorry, Roman. There is one there, uh, but I work with International Association for Promoting Geoethics. They they have the headquarters in Italy, uh, and they launched this book some years ago. Uh, I bought this book because for me it was the first one that was referring to geoethics. But many books have been launched after, after this one. Um, and I think geoethics, uh, first, we have to know what is geoethics. After, we have to include geoethics when we are teaching. It's not so difficult as that. And I think geoethics is very correlated with sustainable development goals. So I'm trying to do with my PhD, PhD, PhD students um, works that include geoscience when they are teaching from middle to secondary school, because I only train students to, to be teachers in middle and secondary school. So if you don't know geoethics, what is geoethics, take a look, because it's important. And International Association for Promoting Geoethics accepts all of us, even if you are not geologists, for free, you can integrate uh, the team. And uh, let's go to the last three goal, targets of goal four. I told you that for me, this, this three means that these three targets are three means of, of implementation, the other seven targets. So the first one is about um, effective learning environments that we all agree that we need to, to upgrade education facilities. The second about the scholarships. And the first refers uh, the need to uh, increase qualified teachers, okay? And that's what I'm going to, to, to speak a little bit about. So what is a qualified teacher? Um, I already told you that for me, it's much more than giving a certificate. But teachers face many threats, many barrier, barriers to be able to improve their classes and to be really efficient. So let's take a look to some of those barriers. Girls not being allowed to attend school. And I'm just showing you one case in Afghanistan, a country that bans girls' education. This is one of them. And we are in 21st century, don't remember, we are in 2023. Another one is teachers being murdered when they go to school, especially if they are females. And it happens in Nigeria. And during the pandemic, Borno, uh, has faced a drastic reduction in humanitarian access with an escalation of actions of non-state armed groups targeting teachers and threatening those who support education activities. And we have here a statement from uh, the chief uh, field office in Borno that she says that uh, violent attacks on education in Northeast Nigeria and the country as a whole are constant. More, another threat or barrier that uh, all the teachers face. Uh, I'm not going to say anything badly about doctors and nurses. My, my daughter is studying to be a doctor, a uh, doctor in medicine, but uh, we all um, said uh, very good words to all of them because they were 
wonderful to try to save lives and made, they made the wonderful world uh, work all over the world. But I also remind the, the work of teachers because you persistently made new resources. In seconds, you learn to teach virtual lessons, okay? You improve your class, your lessons to be able to, to, to be uh, achievable for all those children and students that were unable to go to face-to-face -face classes. So I think your work, I, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. I, I really love to be a teacher, but I think teacher had a huge and wonderful work during the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you, if nobody else acknowledges and uh, thanks you, I, I really think you made a wonderful work. So, Look, in COVID-19 pandemic, 147 million children missed over half of in-person instruction. 24 million learners from pre-primary to university level may never return to school. And uh, education is a lifeline for children and crisis and you uh, start giving uh, remote um, classes uh, at least to three million people. So um, people, uh, teachers face lots of problems. Uh, sometimes you are not expecting, but they are really, really huge and we made a good work. So just to finish some problems that COVID-19 pandemic brought to us, I'm going to speak again about uh, Nigeria and what happens there. Um, first, uh, the British ambassador to Nigeria tells us that 42% of girls are enrolled in basic education, but 58% of uh, boys are engaged in school. So again, a difference between males and females. Then she also says that um, they, they have reported as being out of school at the start of 2020, 2.6 million, but due to COVID, uh, this number increased more 1.2 million. Why? Because uh, Nigeria is a poor, com a poor country and pandemic has exas exacerbated this crisis, learning crisis uh, very high. War in Ukraine. They face two problems at the same time. COVID-19 pandemic and the war. Too much for everybody. Um, I didn't really uh, try to find some uh, quotations relating to, to, to specifically to the war, but um, we have here two quotations. One from director, uh, children country direct in, 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 in Ukraine. And he says that because of shelling and missile strikes, they had lots of um, blackouts. And with the blackouts, they had no internet. So even when teachers try to, to teach by giving remote learning, children were unable to attend the classes. But we also have here a quote from a teacher saying exactly what all teachers made all over the world. They, they teachers do their best. We attached video lessons, we created presentations, we sent out lessons to those who couldn't, couldn't connect to the internet. So this is, was another barrier that difficult uh, the, the job of any teacher. Another problem that generally we that live in developed countries do not really think it's about children have to marriage before they have 18 years old. And we have here some data that tell us that um, Niger, Central African Republic, Chad, and even in Sub-Saharan Africa, there are still a huge percentage of girls that, ha that have to marry without being 18. And I do think they don't choose. It's a culture thing and uh, it still happens in 21st century. More. Children with bad nutrition and no water that can also not attend school because they don't have the, 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 the basic needs. I have here uh, the case of uh, Salim. Salim, he is eight years old. He's from Ethiopia, I think. 
no, Yemen. He's from Yemen. And her mother says that he suffers from scarcity. And his mother says he's alive, he's there, but he's unable to even um, play with her brothers and sisters. And we have, uh, uh, when I was trying to find uh, those information, I was surprised to, 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 to get information saying that even in uh, developing countries, there are also children overweight. So we have both problems. Some that don't have anything to eat and some uh, not controlled um, uh, nutrition in, in, um, in children in the same country. But I'm going to speak also a little bit about water and I'm going to show you a short video and I would like you to see two things in the video. So watch it, watch it till the end. The first thing I want you to see, to watch, is the time that this 13 years old girl from Ethiopia walks every day to find water, okay? And at the end of the video, please take attention to what do they do with the water, okay? Maybe it's better if you do it, please. Have you seen, have you watched what they do with water at the end of the day? They drank the water that they used to uh, wash the dishes. So after eight, eight hours of walking, that's the, the not safe in drinking water that they get. Can we stop and go to the next one? Next one is just click. No, I couldn't forget this one, this threat for teachers, for education, not really for teachers, but for education. It is the children in labor market. And I'm going to speak in mining because we are in a geoscience conference. We all buy too much gadgets every day. We, we are always changing our mobile for a new edition. We buy a new car just because our neighbor also bought a new car. And it's like as if we, if we don't if we do not see we do, we do not care we don't remember, but you all know that to have gadgets new technology we need ore, and ore has to be explored and exploited uh, in some countries generally in poor countries because there are lots of strikes for the population when we try to do mining in uh, in uh, urban places, and we know that children are explored, but we continue to do the same. Who haven't bought, bought a mobile in the last two years? Wow, great. It's because of low salary or because you are thinking about the what happens in uh, the children and in mining, okay? Um, I, I, I bought a new mobile this year, but the last one had at least six or seven years. Uh, and I didn't buy a new car for a use time, but that was because I didn't really have money. But at least I'm thinking every day that uh, I work in a geoscience department that uh, there are children being explored. So what I'm going to show you is a, a short video made by my students, teachers in training. I ask them, they are split in groups, and I ask them to do a task relating um, geoethics 
and geoscience, of course. And one group made a video. It is a huge video. I cannot show uh, the full video. It, it will take uh, too much time. Uh, but uh, they focus this situation. Uh, and I think it, it's good, at least to, to show in a class and to remind that there are children being uh, explored. I'm trying, Linus. Nope. Yeah. Better you do it. Don't hold it back. to stop because I don't have much time okay I will send the videos to to Jean-Luc and he can put it online if you want and just to finish another threat that we generally don't remember is the traffic the child traffic and I got this information that children make up one third of all human traffic trafficking victims worldwide more than uh, adults and that uh, refugees and migrant children are trafficked into prostitution. We don't remember that daily, but try not to forget because it, because it is important. I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. Uh, in the beginning, I said, I'm just going to remind you some things that we forget uh, in our daily life. Okay, so just a little bit and very quickly, um, teacher, teachers, qualified teachers can be leaders of change. And it also includes geoscience teachers. Of course, uh, we have to know what is a leader of change. And the leader of change is an individual or all individuals that can bring to light social issues and suggest novel solutions while garnering support from the rest of society and to successfully promote and implement social change for the collective action of society. This is a leader of change. And um, even, um, I think it's UNESCO, I'm not uh, reading very well. Uh, on war UNESCO says that educators are powerful change agents. So what can we do? Oh, just two quotes that are very important, and I also have the, the, those quotations displayed in my in my wall in the lab. Nelson Mandela said many years ago that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And some years ago, not so many, Barack Obama said there was a great teacher somewhere in your life. That's what I want from all teachers, be leaders of change and give the opportunity to a children to at least meet one of you one time in his or in her life. Uh, so what can we do? We can still do the traditional activities, field works, uh, some trekking, summer schools, lab work, uh, lectures and uh, the common exams, but we can do new things. We can speak about humans in geoscience. And I can tell you that once I try to include that in a textbook and it was not accepted because it, it was like a curiosity and not an important thing. If I was speaking about Hutton or Lyell or Stefano, Nicolas Stefan, it would be included, but who cares about two women that only history of science reminds them. So these are books that are sell, 
uh, to remind the work of women in science. And uh, uh, Marie Trapp, you can also uh, see short videos in the internet. You can do activities to engage students with education special needs. This was the only one I made in 33 years of teaching. I made, uh, uh, it was published in Earth Learning Idea because my students sent it to, to them. And it's a way to blind people identify minerals without the other senses. But it is the only one I made in 33 years. So we have to really try to do more. Um, but we can go from tradi traditional to digital to develop the, the, the digital competencies that we need. So there we have Google Earth. It is very easy to do virtual field trips in Google Earth. I can tell you because I'm not very good with technology and I can make it. Um, and I also bring a notice from uh, the Imperial Geoscientists Complete United Kingdom's first Masters in Science virtual field trip. And it's from 2020, some years ago, two or three years ago. We can also use simulations online. I use them very often. Uh, they are generally in English. I, I have luck because Brazilians also made some, so I have some in Portuguese, but uh, it is perfect well understanding by at least uh, secondary or middle students. We can also use the apps. Okay, not only Google Earth, but we have lots of apps relating to geoscience. The, I have the one in, in the top. It's uh, I have the, the app in my mobile and with a shaking table, students can see the different types of waves. And we can also do that. We know that not all of us have the same conditions that we have. So he's teaching with almost nothing. He's a really qualified teacher. He's promoting education very efficiently. But I said something wrong. I said he was doing that without nothing. And it, it is wrong because there is a child there, a teacher, a pen, and a book. So I'm just going to finish. Please, Linus. To remind you again. Education is one of the blessings of life and one of its necessities. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Education is the only solution. Education first. I spoke too fast. I'm very sorry, but thank you. I'm very grateful for having the, the, that opportunity. And thank you for listening to me during 45 minutes.